Thank you, everyone. Um, it's kind of interesting to be in India. I've had friends uh, tell me about India for maybe 12, 13 years uh, in the Silicon Valley, very common, uh, that most people you work with. And I had actually heard that Jaymaki, the thing that I created, has a special meaning here, uh, different than what I had actually intended. But um, it's kind of interesting how uh, the world and languages work. So I. Uh, I've been trying to make Ajax easier. I, I know that it's uh, really not that hard. Maybe I should ask by a show of hands, how many of you work with Ajax on a daily basis? All right, that's a lot of you. How many of you would like it to be a little easier? All right, uh, that's why you're here, all right. So next generation uh, tooling from Sun, more specifically what we're doing with NetBeans and also Project JMonkey are both focused at making Ajax easier. There's a, there's a big focus on getting JavaScript making it easier to, to not only use but to, de to debug and also to componentize it in such a way that you can easily reuse it is a big focus on what we're doing. So I, I don't have as many slides today. A lot of what I'm going to do is demos. So if you don't like real demos and you don't like to see me fall on my face, you know, you can go. But sometimes it's fun. I always like to do things live. Um, none of my demos will be done as PowerPoint slides. Moving right along, let me make sure I've got focus here. We already heard who I am. So just as a general uh, structure of what I'm going to do, I'm going to talk about JavaScript support, the need for it. I'm going to talk about the debugger support that we're adding to NetBeans. And I'll also talk a little bit about where we're going with it. Uh, I'll talk about JMaki in general. How many of you came to my JMaki session earlier today? OK, so there's a few of you. So you can, you can train the rest. Or you can watch here. So this will be more tool-centric today. Uh, we're not going to talk about the nuts and bolts as much. We're going to talk about RESTful services, because this is where I believe the, wor the web is going. I believe that web is really about service-driven widgets or gadgets, and you really need to talk about that in the context of this class, or not class, but session. And after that, I'm going to summarize. So here we go. What is AJAX? We heard about it this morning. Um, funny experience I had, um, I put a Dojo fisheye. It's a, it's a widget where if you hover over it, um, the icons get bigger. Put this in a page back about two and a half years ago for one of my directors. And uh, he said, oh, that's Ajax. And I was like, no, that's not Ajax. Ajax is this thing. You know, I tried to explain what asynchronous XML plus, or asynchronous uh, JavaScript plus XML was. And he didn't get it. He, he thought that anything dynamic was Ajax. And really, the world has come to think very similar things. And on top of that, we don't even use um, XML anymore for Ajax. Most of us use JSON that developed the Ajax functionality that we have. But it is a great term to have in the sense that it's something that we can all understand when we try to explain what we're doing to other people. It's providing a richer user experience. On top of that, I think not just providing the, the experience is an important thing, but not reinventing the wheel every time. There's a lot of good JavaScript functionality. Um, as it had been mentioned in the, my introduction, I work with the Dojo Foundation sometimes. I also work with Yahoo and jQuery and many other libraries. And what I've come to find is that having choice on what you use from the JavaScript perspective is a good thing. And we want to make sure that with our tools that you can use those different libraries and use them together in a lot of cases and have a coherent and a really good experience. Moving right along, um, I call this the new web. Now, every time they add a number to the web 2.0 or web 3.0 or web 5.0, I always get upset. You know, it's it's kind of like you know, where, what are you trying to do? In the U.S., they're very concerned about numbers and you know, upgrading the number of Web 2.0. My one of my best friends almost named him his son Jason 2.0. You know, so it, it's gonna you know work its way into our culture. And uh, you know, I don't know. I like calling this now the new web. And you you can quote me on that. It, it's newer than what we had, and it's the new way of doing things. And it's kind of gotten old even itself. I mean, we've been doing this now for three years. This is the new way of doing things. And the architecture looks a little bit like this. Can you see this in the back of the room? The slides will be online. But what I'll do is I'll explain it a little bit. The new web has a lot of AJAX in here. But in this case, the AJAX is getting JSON data and not XML. On top of that, in the new web, we're, we're communicating sometimes with services outside of our own. This is what's called a mashup. And not only that, we can communicate with things without using AJAX requests. It's a different way of doing it called JSONP. 
you see a lot of this out there, a lot of gadgets and a lot of the things from Google are designed this way. So how do you work yourself into this new web? You know, you've got all your logic. This is basically you. And you want to get that out to your clients. Not that hard to do if you've got something like JMonkey or some of the other frameworks there. But there still needs to be something that ties it all together into a single integrated experience. So what I like to say is, you know, at Sun we're trying to put the I back in IDE again so that we can provide all these new aspects that you need to do. So what you need to do is you need to deal with a lot of JavaScript. You need to have logic that, client, that spans the client and the server. And we have logic that spans both. You also need to be able to debug it. You need to integrate with local services. Uh, this could be your managed beans, uh, your database, could be MySQL. Depends on what kind of language you're using, but irrespective to, to that, you really just need to bring everything together. So, let me um, let me focus a little bit about where I am now in my career. I used to be the Ajax. Well, I still am the Ajax architect at Sun, but I moved from being in the server organization to the tools organization with the very uh, point in mind to make the tools job better. Um, I think a, a technology needs to exist to make this easier, but on the same time, on top of that, you need to have the right tooling to support that. Uh, part of what I've done in the past few months, or actually a few months when I say 16, 18 months, is really tried to focus on JMaki and making sure that's integrated inside of uh, our tooling at Sun. So with that, I'm not going to bore you with slides. Um, I'm going to jump right in and show you what I mean, because I like to um, program a lot more than I like to talk. All right. So the integrated experience I've been talking about. This is NetBeans. We, um, as far as what I'm going to show you in JMaki, can also be done in Eclipse, just the same. But because I work at Sun, I work in the NetBeans organization, I want to show you how much better we're going to do everything. So very integrated and very easy to do. The application server I'm going to use today is going to be uh, Glassfish, though I could use Tomcat or something else. Um, I used to work in the, the Glassfish organization, and I think it's a really good product, and if you haven't looked at it, you should check it out. So there's my um, you know, sponsor pitch. Let's move into creating something. So here's my web application. I'm given a name. I'm given all these little choices, what application server, what version of J2E I want to use. And at this point, I choose that I want to use JMaki. JMaki is a framework I'm working on. Provided a little template there. We decide to have a page. We're going to add a page with a footer. We're going to cross our fingers. The tool hasn't been friendly to me today. All right, so I get a little starting point here. So as far as tooling goes, we also want to provide people with a great, you know, a palette, something that, or a canvas, I guess is a better word of saying it, something that they can drop their different functionality in and start up really fast creating their applications. So what you're going to see in a few slides, we're going to mention all the different JavaScript libraries. Well, as part of JMaki, we've integrated these all into NetBeans. And we're working on um, actually making this so you don't have to use JMaki uh, in NetBeans to access these different things. When I say different things, I mean widgets from different toolkits. There's a lot of neat stuff out there. So what's the one thing you're never going to put in a real application? I'm thinking a clock. So unless you're, you're going out creating some type of where am I and what time is it, which actually for me would be really good because I've crossed every time zone there is in the world in the last 24 hours. I didn't realize how far away India was. But I could do a little mashup just on that. So what I've done here is I've dropped in a dojo widget. This is a clock widget. And all I had to do is hit the reload button. I get my little clock there. So this is the time zone. Where is 2 o'clock? Oh, this is where it is. So it's 2 a.m. where I'm from. Maybe that's why I've got the, the funky headache. Let's say I, I want to configure this widget. Notice that me as a developer, I'm seeing this in a, something familiar to me. This is a JSP tag. And I can change, for example, whether I want this as a gray or, you know, there's different options on the, what, do we want to, actually the plain clock's pretty neat. So, what I did is configured this widget to basically have a plain interface on it. 
Now, if you really knew Dojo, you could go in and you could go under the covers and modify the image and do easy things, but the tool has just made it that much easier for me. On top of that, we, you can add themes and other things to it. So that's basically, uh, well, let me, since I mentioned the, the fisheye, and this is everyone's favorite widget, let me uh, drop that in here, too. So fisheye's got a little bit more data associated with it, but at the end of the day, it's still a fisheye. And I'm going to load it in, and it's going to load in horizontally right now. And this is loading images from Flickr, so it's going to be a little bit slow. Uh, Flickr is hosted in the US, and hopefully my internet's going to work. Come on, web connection. Let me make sure I'm even connected really quick here. Well, that would explain. Oh, there we go. It's just slow. So this is a fisheye. Very common widget. Let's say I don't want it horizontal, I want it vertical. I can go in, in the case of this widget, and I can once again edit the properties of it. And I can say I want the orientation to be vertical. Now notice I'm not coding this. I'm just going in and editing a property editor. This is where the tool comes in and makes it a little easier. Because these images should be cached now, it should come in. Notice we've changed the orientation. That's what you get from a tool. All right. So you just saw Dojo. Those are two different widgets from Dojo. And let's go back into the slides. Where were we? There we go. So you just noticed we've got to deal with JavaScript, but you didn't see much of it. So the tool just made that a little easier. We're going to intermix some external code. You notice that Flickr brought in some widgets, or not widgets, but in this case, the images. Now, you might be pulling in RSS feeds. You might be pulling in Google Maps. There's a lot of different external things you've got to deal with. Uh, you've got services out there, something that might produce, uh, for example, uh, data or data sets for a data table. A lot of different types of things that can come in. And those are different things that you're going to have to worry about. All right. What we added in, in, um, in NetBeans and what we're adding, uh, we've got a new JavaScript editor. This was, uh, just came in to the NetBeans 6.1. This will allow us to edit our code better. So if you're writing widgets or you're writing logic for them in JavaScript, it's gotten a lot easier. We're also going to be integrating JMonkey into the core NetBeans in the next version so that you won't have to go download it as a plugin and install it. We're also uh, going to work better. We already have this integration in 6.1, but we've got JaxRS integration this lets you write your services. So let me show you what I mean about the editor. So we didn't write any JavaScript for this code, but say we wanted to. So say I wanted to change the logic on that fisheye so that when someone clicked on it, something else happened. So on the on click function right here, I've got some JavaScript. I don't know, is this font big enough for everyone to see? Can you see it in the back? I hope so, because I can't make it much bigger, otherwise I can't read it. Well, let me make it. I'll do a little bit better. I always have a hard time at these conferences unless I wear my glasses. I guess I'm going blind early. Little laptops. All right, so the default font here. Actually, we're at 18, but I'll give you two more points. Let's see where that goes. All right. All right, so we've got some JavaScript here. What NetBeans has done is not just do we color highlight, but we also have added things like code completion. So if I start typing jmonkey, notice I get all the different functions, just like I would in any Java file. Um, if things have been commented correctly, I'll get the, the JavaScript documentation as well. So, and also if I make an error, because this is actually loading up the JavaScript and writing it I, for example, if I have a variable here um, called value and I don't use it, if you, if you look at it very closely, it's actually got a little black squiggly line under it, which means that I've got a declared variable, but I'm never using it. So other things we give in the editor, we also give tips on your JavaScript. So if you, um, if you have like uh, semicolons or other things that need to be placed in there, or if you've got potential compatibility issues uh, with the different browsers like IE, um, you can get hints from the, the, 
from the actual IDE itself uh, that will tell you before you make a mistake. It's helped me quite a bit refactor code. So this editor is new to me too. We've only had it for about four months now. And it's, it's helped me refactor a lot of the things that I do. So I've got a value here. So what, what's happened is someone's clicked on something and I want to do something else. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to do a common thing we always do. It's called alert debugging. Uh, we do this in on click. And I'm going to jmarkey inspect. So basically, I'm going to dis I'm going to display what got. Now let's do this. Just to make things more complicated. There we go. So now when I click on one of these here, I do need to hit a page reload because you don't get that for free. This is part of doing the development. So when I click on this, and that's what I used to look like back when I didn't do JMonkey. What's going on here? I thought it was on click, but it might be on select. And if it's not on select, I'll show another feature. All right. OK, it's neither. So what we're going to do here is we're going to turn debugging on. This is the, the built-in debugger of JMonkey, and it'll basically tell me when I click on something whether or not it was picked up by a subscriber. That's because it's actually mapped to a different topic. Interesting. Oh, there we go. So I had a different listener on the top one, and that's why it wasn't picking up. So it was publishing to a different topic that didn't end in on-click. So there's our message. It tells me a little bit more about what was in it. Uh, this other debugging support is actually part of JMonkey, but I'm going to show you in a, in a few more demos on how you can actually uh, get this inside of uh, NetBeans itself. All right, back to Slideware. So a little bit about JavaScript. Now I know that you'll probably yell at me because there's more libraries than this in the world. Um, there's also, um, I don't see jQuery on this list and some others, but there are a lot of different libraries out there and we're working at making sure that all these are provided to you out of the box as part of the IDE integration. On top of that, we're also going to be working to make sure that the documentation for these different libraries also is provided as well. Um, ext.js isn't on there right now, though it, you, know, you should be able to just drop it in and have it. Um, basically what NetBeans will do is it'll look inside your project file for the different JavaScript and if it's been documented using uh, the JS doc standard, it can actually pull in the, the documentation for that as well. All right. So you've got great JavaScript support. You've got a, now a layering on top of it that makes that even easier if you want to use JMaki. Oh, you know what? I think I just killed myself here. Let's make sure. I want to go back out. Speaking of which, um, we might as well just jump into the next demo. So you notice that I put that alert in there to, to detect where I was. Well, say I don't want to do that. You know, alert debugging is not always the funnest thing to do. You really want your tool to be an integrated environment. So what we can do for that is I can pull out that alert and actually use the functionality built into NetBeans, or it's coming in NetBeans, that will prevent me from having to do that. So I'm taking the alert out. And what I can do here is I can now add a breakpoint. And this breakpoint is interesting because this code is being executed on the browser. So how do we do this? Well, let's make sure it works first, and then we'll describe how it's done. So I cross my fingers. Everyone cross their fingers with me. This is a very traditional for people that do demos live. Let's just hope it doesn't break. All right. So on my application, I'm going to the properties. And I'm going to go to the debug section. And I'm going to turn off the web application. So I don't need server-side debugging right now. I'm just going to go for the client side. Right now, we've only supporting this in Firefox, but we're working on IE support as well. So now, hopefully if this works correctly, what I can do here is now I can launch this in debug mode. And pray for the best. Go, go, debugger. 
the functionality I'm showing you is available as of an update to NetBeans 6.1 that we just released uh, on the 4th of May. So this is brand new, and it's still very, uh, very brand new. So I'm hoping that we won't have issues with it. I did help a little bit on some of this code, so I'm hoping if there's a problem, I might be able to debug it. So for some reason, it wanted to restart my application server, and this is why we're waiting forever. Come on. So what it's doing here is it's, it's layering something on top of the NetBean or the Firefox debugger. It's actually layering another Zool plugin that works on the browser that can communicate back and forth between NetBeans. This happens under the covers. You as a developer don't need to know what's really there. So in theory, oops, I'm going to click on this, and we should get dropped into our code here. And let's see if that actually happened. Am I able to step through? No. It never works when you want it to, does it? Right, let's try that one more time. What it's supposed to do is stop the execution context and actually give me a stack trace of what's going on. So let me create a more simple application. I'm not even going to put JMock in it. And what I will do in the head of this is I will put a script. Once again, I'm going to cross my fingers, because this didn't work last time, and put the debug on the client. <laughs> Why me? we're going to get debugger support on the client today. I will. Uh... Yes? So the idea was to layer it on top of the Firefox plugin, but to allow for you to, to stay in the context of an IDE. Now, if you remember, the, the I in IDE stands for integrated. And what we're trying to do is to provide you a single place for you to do most of your work. So what, what's actually happening under the covers on top of Firebug is we're gathering all the information from Firebug and actually detecting the same events. And then there's, a, there's a, basically a stream of XML going back and forth between that plugin and NetBeans. And that XML is telling it about the state, uh, what the call stack is, what the, pro the parameters, where, it's, where the breakpoint has gone. Um, all that information is actually communicated under the covers. And there's a lot of value in that in the, in the respect that you, if you can do that for both IE and Firefox, then you've got a single place where you can do all your work. And right now we do re require Firebug to do this, but the hope is that you know, going forward we'll be able to do it even without it. But even if we were to do it without it, we still have to work with Firebug because people could step through using the client-side debugging facilities as well. So what we're really working on this now, I was hoping I could show you because it's really neat when it works. It did work last night, but you know, something it's just not right. Let me actually, uh, well, I'm not going to, should I risk it? Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to focus a little bit more on Jim. If there's time afterwards, I'll try it one more time. But uh, I just, there's no guarantee. So. The symbol on the bottom there is talking about wrapping JavaScript functionality. So rather than you have to go out and, and actually get Yahoo and drop it in your web application, go to their documentation, learn it, 
and try to figure out how to do all the different individual things, and that could be the same for Dojo or even jQuery or any of the other libraries. What we've tried to do is package up things into what we call widgets or extensions and provide those to you as a user so that you can include a tag. And basically, it's, it's Ajax in a, in a JSP or a JSF tag. The project is open source. It's VSD based. Uh, what else? You can choose the, the tool of your choice. It's, we use the best of breed technologies. And what we started to do is not just with the normal JavaScript libraries that we showed earlier, we're also integrating with Google Gears, Flash, so you can do sound. And also, we've got a Flash player that we just integrated, Google and Yahoo Maps. A lot of other different assets out there, all accessible via JavaScript, but there's always a different API to do it. So what we're really trying to do is make that consistent. Consistency is really important, I think. And um, on top of that, we're trying to follow that new web application model where everything is service driven and there's JSON running in the background. Our favorite slide. Bad debugger. All right. Anything in particular you want to build today? Think of something simple? Well, maybe I should give you ideas. We can get in big trouble. Okay. I'll build a, a very simple, I'll build a very simple mashup just to start off with. Maybe we'll use that as a starting point. All right, so we've got a starting point. We followed the recipe. We dropped in. We chose a template. Uh, we've got all the code syntax highlighting we'd ever want. Let me give, open up a little bit more screenage. Everybody loves new maps, right? So if you want a map, generally what you need to do is go out to Google, get an API key, drop it in your page, configure the API key, make sure it matches the one on your website, then you have to go out and look at their API documentation and figure out how to interact with it. If you're going to use Yahoo's maps, same story. Flash maps, same story. What we've tried to do is provide a single tag called Google Map. In that tag, you've, you've provided some longitude and latitude coordinates and you get a map. So I actually need to deploy this. Oh, was my internet connection now? Oh, it was just slow. Okay. So, anyone know where this location is? No? This is the epicenter of the Silicon Valley. This is Santa Clara. Uh, I live in Santa Clara. If I jump over the fence, I'm at work. If I jump over two fences, I'm at Intel. If I jump over a river and behind two fences, I'm at Cisco. And then if I went really far in my car, which is about five miles, I'd get to Apple. So all the headquarters in the Silicon Valley are basically based in this general region, and there's a little bit more over here. So, We, we want to center the map um, on the center of the Silicon Valley, but actually what people don't know is it's set to the geo-coordinates of my house. So if you ever want to know where I live, just pull in a map. This is just a, a map. wasn't that hard to do. What we can do from JMock is provide you some defaults. So generally people with maps want to choose the or select the map type, so it can be like a a uh, hybrid or just a, a normal, uh, what, what else? We've got satellite, hybrids, regular, uh, and the regular is the most boring. And what I did there is from the tool, I just selected map type, and notice the tool set that for me. I, I hit save on the page, and now I can go through and do a reload here. And I'm going to get an ugly map. I don't like these maps because they look more like what you're going to get in a little, uh, well, an old school book. So what I did um, last week is I completely wrote this, rewrote this widget from scratch. So we're actually um, expending a lot more energy on mapping because this is what a lot of people tend to use. Uh, we're also working on, like I said earlier, a flash player as, or a flash uh, player for video as well. So it was, it was that easy to do a map. So what if I want to do a map and then I want something to select location for me? You ever use JMaki? This is one of the common demos we do, and I'll do this in the footer. So let me choose a Yahoo editor or Yahoo GeoCoder. I'm sorry. 
what this component is, is this one is wired in to use JMaki's publish, or it uses publish subscribe, but it also uses a geocoder service that comes with JMaki. And this is a proxy that will go out and talk to a RESTful service that Yahoo provides that if you give it an address in, uh, well, basically city street terms, it'll give you geo coordinates back. So what we're going to do is we drop that widget in the page, and that provides us a text field. And when we submit a request from that text field, it's going to go talk to Yahoo under the covers for us, and then it's going to publish an event to the page that it found some geo coordinates, if it finds the coordinates, of course. So I'm doing all this. All right, let's make sure. And there we go. So it was that easy. So say, um, say for some reason I didn't want to use Google's Maps. I don't know why you not want to, but you know, there are a lot of different providers out there. So say maybe I wanted to use Yahoo's Map, but I didn't want to have to relearn all the APIs and go out and learn everything on how to do a map. Well, we provide the same interface and the same publish and subscribe interactivity with the maps from Yahoo as well. So I'm going to drop in a Yahoo map, and I'll just leave it on the different view. So one of them will be in, in the regular view, and the other one will be a little prettier with the, the pictures. Now what we can do, type in the same location, and both maps react. They both, are, they both subscribe to the same topics. When they hear the event from the geocoder, they're going to replace the point. So while this seems kind of, you know, I, I don't know how many, I guess you, you might use a, a map in your application, but more realistically, you're going to have different widgets, maybe a, a menu widget controlling, you know, tabular data, or maybe other view components such as a chart in your application. More than likely, you're going to use the same techniques we used here for your own widgets. And all our widgets that we provide are wired to do these same type of things. We've got lots of uh, demo applications and lots of examples um, that will come uh, in the future. We're, we're trying to build even more advanced stuff. All right, so that was Publish and Subscribe and uh, Simple Widget Development. So say you want to do something more enterprisey. I'm going to take out the maps, even though I've got to love a map. And what can we add to make things interesting? What I'll do is I'll add a tree component on one side. And I'm going to, is that the left? Now it's not always the order that matters, right? Would you rather see an accordion or a tab view? Any preferences? I'm going to drive a container from a different widget. Accordion? All right. You got to say it with more energy. Accordion. So we've got a Yahoo widget, and we'll drive a Dojo widget with it. And this will just show you how we've kind of put a layer on top to make things more consistent. So the accordion is provided, in this case, by Dojo. And we'll drive it with tab view. Come on. Doesn't want to drop it, does it? All right. Take out the map. Add an accordion. Hit save. Before I wire these two together, I'm just going to do one thing. I'm going to make sure that both widgets come in. They've both got data here. There we've got it, right? So what we really want to do is we want to select, let's say we want to select a, an accordion, uh, one of the panes, when I click on a specific thing in the tree control. So what I can do here is this is uh, a declarative action, which I'm going to do. So on node 3.1, and I'll just leave it here, what I'm going to do is change this to Dojo Accordion. And it's selecting a pane on it, and the target ID is bar. So one of the, the accordion panes needs to have an ID of bar on it. And there's already one there, the one called Magazines. And I'll change this to My Bar. I don't own a bar, but you know, why not?
So I've got my bar here, it's not selected, and when I click on 3.1, it selects the bar. We can also do things like lazy load and do other things. So now if I want to put, for example, another set of page with widgets in it, I can do that as well. So let's create a little map one. Create a map.jsp. Don't need any of this, and I'm just going to drop in a Google map. I'm going to show you the failure case first. Um, we've actually gotten around this with the latest version of Jmaki, the Google widget we rewrote. But I'm going to show you a case that doesn't work, just uh, so you see what happens. So when I select this bar, oops, I need to change it to load from map, don't I? So I change that to map, so it'll load that map page. And the lazy load, if you saw it carefully, was set to true, so it won't load that page until I click on this. What you'll notice there is it's giving me a nice little error message saying basically you can't load a Google map. This is a widget that can't be dynamically loaded. So you have an option in this case of JMaki. You can actually turn this thing into an iframe. You know what iframes are? They're basically, it's another JavaScript context that we can publish into and out of via JMaki. We can do this pretty seamless in the sense of you still have to set this as an iframe, but that's all you have to do. So I'm going to sw switch this to an iframe. It means I'm in a different JavaScript context. But now I should be able to view my map and still publish and subscribe in and out of this component. It usually doesn't say loading, but also I never load it from this side of the world. And there we go. You've got a map. And if I had my little geocoder in here still, I'm going to show the map. And what you do have to understand is this is a different frame or a different iframe. So normally, publishing in and out of here would not be possible unless you have something like JMonkey that actually has listeners on both ends. So it can actually go through iframes as well. So we've got a very developed uh, way of communicating with the different widgets, as you saw. Uh, went right through the iframe. Pretty fun to do. OK. So I think we've, uh, we've shown enough of JMonkey, and now I need to go a little bit into the services because we've got about 16 minutes left. We've showed you how to really work well with your own services um, in the case of JMaki, where you're including other JavaScript. But what happens if you've got web services or JPA, database-driven widgets, and you need to get data into it? So in this case, this is really hard to do by hand. Now, you can go in and you can write the code to do the RESTful services. That takes a while. There's, there's nothing stopping you from doing it. Uh, the APIs for this are called the Jersey APIs. This is the new web service stack for J2E. But it's even easier to do this in a tool. Rather than go all the ways to the slides, let me just show you. So I've got an existing uh, set of RESTful endpoints. And these are customer resources in this case. These are bound to my the database. Um, I was able to, to run an a example sample application. I create a new application, and this is a, a test application for the rest, RESTful Web Services. I'm not going to recreate it here, but what it does is it basically looks at the sample database that's provided with NetBeans, and it creates RESTful services to back all of them. You notice there's a product MIME on these, and the, there's two different return types. So basically, it's providing the JSON and the XML interfaces to both of these. It's all done under the covers. I don't have to do anything. I can also point this at an existing set of, uh, or an existing set of tables, and it will also generate the right object types for me. Very, very handy. But what happens if you want to stick a UI in front? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you a new web application, and I'm going to show it using JMaki because these two things are integrated. Create a new web app. some 
reason it didn't give me the right starter page. Let me um, delete this. I contact Click and I say new. And then I say RESTful Web Service Client Stubs. I know that's a mouthful, but I've got the, the RESTful Web Service plugin comes by default now with NetBeans 6.1. And if you've got something already provided, you can select this, create the stubs. And basically, this is kind of like the old RMI days where you're going to create, instead of using Java, it's going to be JavaScript stubs to communicate back with that service that we had in the other uh, project that we created. So first of all, we tell it what project those stubs exist in. I wish it would have just stayed on the first one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my workspace where I had that project, and it was customer DB2. So I'm going to select that project, and I'll just say finish. And it's going to sit here and churn for a minute. But what it's going to do is it's going to go out and create JMonkey widgets to actually JMonkey widgets that are bound to those services. So I don't need to learn all the APIs on how to do REST. I just tell it associate these widgets with this service. Now, right now, we're only doing tables. We're hoping to get trees and other widgets associated with them, and also even charts. So you get instructions when you do this. And by the way, I'm not loading anything new. I've got JMaki installed, and this is just NetBeans 6.1. So notice it's got a little test resource. Ta uh, there should be, sorry, there should be a set of widgets in here, and I need to go to the file view to show you. So these got added to my application, and these are JMaki. I don't know, it's kind of hard to see, but these are JMaki widgets in our widget uh, library format. And now what I do here is I add these to the palette. We're going to work at making this automatic, but for now you've got to add it to the palette. And we are in Web Application 13. So I added these to the palette here. I'd added them before, but these are bound to new services. So now I'm back in my own page here. And I'm going to go into the main content area. And I am going to drag and drop the service that I just created. So here they are. It got added. And notice here it's got the service set to the URL in a different application. All right. Oh, did we create a new web application? I think we did, so I got to deploy it. It's processing. I don't know why it's taking so long, but let's keep our fingers crossed. So. We just got a table widget that has add, remove, delete, all the CRUD applications on that service. And if you modify any of these data, it will actually modify the data in the database. So it's real CRUD. It was done for you. This, this, is, what we can, this is the direction we're going with our tooling. So you've got great services, JSON-based. You've got JSON-driven widgets. You've also got the combination of the two. Now, as far as we're going, there are a few areas where we're also working on. We're trying to make the editing, um, live editing, a little more easier. And what else? We're also uh, trying to improve uh, the support for other libraries. But uh, basically, you can do most of where, where we're going with uh, the tooling in today's NetBeans 6.1. And of course, we're going to make it better. All right. So back on the slides, I think we're almost there. Saw the wood. Let me see if we've got some time. I might be able to show you one thing more. We've got nine minutes. So before I go into the summary, I'll show you where we're going even further. I showed this in my last demo, but I think it would be fun to show you all here as well. Created a new set of widgets called the JMonkey Web Top. And this is part of, right now you have to get it via the new plugin. Come on, where's my, oh, I'm in. But this will be built into the, the next generation tooling. And say you want to create something that looks like um, a lot of the new um, applications out there where you give people a set of widgets and they can configure it. We've got a widget container for other widgets that allows you to do that. So the idea is you can create something that's not a portal, but something a little smaller, a little lighter weight that's Ajax driven. 
So I'll create a new web application here. I've got the newest JMaki installed. I'm going to click, I'm going to se select a standard with no sidebars. So I've got my starting point. I'm going to take out the subheader here. We don't need it. I'm then going to go in. And I've got JMaki Web Top, and I've got a menu that drives it. And that's just a menu widget using all the same functionality that we've seen in the content area. I'm going to add the web top itself. So as a user, you get the ability to decide what goes in here. And this has a set of widgets that's pre-configured. So the web top itself is a container of other widgets. You can also load gadgets and other things in it. So when I deploy this thing, I've just done something on, almost on scale of a lot of the, the advanced stuff you see out there today. You just notice I'd already loaded something in before. So by default, this uses Google Gears to do the persistence, but you can map this back into MySQL or another database. So that's my cat, by the way. Her name's Kitty. Imagine that. Oh, I don't even have to leave the browser. I keep forgetting. So what the web top is all about, wherever I put it, is I can go in and add widgets here based on a set that I developed in NetBeans. So if I want a little tag cloud, I can drop a tag cloud in here. I can move around my little widget things here, and I can resize the different areas on this. At least I should be able to resize. Let me see what's going on here. You also notice when I do the page reload that it was persisted for me. Let me reset the columns here. Oh, there we go. So we've got the resetters in. I have things like feed reader. The feed reader is set to work with feed burner. So I can go out and I can load uh, all kinds of different RSS feeds. In this case, it's the Glassfish one. And what we've done is we've allowed for the same widgets and the same configuration files to be used. So I, just like in NetBeans, but now I'm in the browser, I'm giving my users the ability to configure my widgets uh, without le leaving the page. So I can do anything that I could have done in NetBeans. I can even set things like the height and the number of widgets. And this is driven basically going through just like you would on Dig or another site. And we're able to do this ourselves. You can also map these back into your own RSS feeds and other things. This is where we're going. Um, I find it very interesting because it allow, you know, it's fun to build applications again. You know, being in the J2E world for so long, you know, we never focused on the UI. We created JMaki and also the NetMeans integration to allow for that. So okay, you've seen JMaki, you've seen the integration with services, you've seen you know service-driven widgets, you've seen the JavaScript support. Uh, there's not much else to see today, so let's see the last slide. And after that, uh, I've already said this many times. We're trying to make Ajax easier and we're committed to providing the tools behind it. So I mean, that's basically what you've seen today. Uh, we've got five minutes, so uh, we, I think it might be good to just uh, ask a few questions. So, so right now, we support the new Europa-style Eclipse. So the question was, do we support other tooling? Uh, the answer is yes. Though I am part of the NetMeans team, the JMaki group is not all part of the NetMeans organization. So we work, we always have, we have releases that come out at the same time on Eclipse. And also we have ant-based uh, tooling support as well for the, all the other IDEs that aren't out there. There is an Eclipse plugin. To get it, jmaki.com, downloads. And basically we've got an update center that will allow you to download that. Let me see where it's at. So the one URL you don't want to forget, jmaki.com. As far as jmaki goes, and there's, oh, of course, netbeans.org. And we have a downloads link here, and there's an Eclipse link right near the top. And this will give you the location where you can get uh, not only our plugin, but also Glassfish. I think the integration, even when you're using Eclipse is a little bit better as far as uh, that goes. It opened another window. That's why it's not coming up. So any other questions? 
Come on, where did it go? I'd like to thank you all for staying and learning about the new tooling. If you've got questions, comments, or things you'd like to see, you know, please come up front or con well, or get my card, and I can take that uh, feedback right back into the NetMeetings group. Um, I do try to, to help drive this. Um, like I said, there's more that we can do, um, but we have to know it from the users as well. Uh, yeah, I'd, a lot of JMOC -E happened because of the pain points and things that I learned from going and speaking at conferences. Um, I developed too, so I understand some of it, but uh, please share it with us. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Greg. We're gonna have